Greetings, this is August 6, and we're looking at an image from the Sentinel-2 system on the EO browser. I'm switching the filter to SWIR so that we can see burn areas around the White Rock Lake fire. Uh, it's the first opportunity we've had in a few days to actually look at the burn area using the system. They're fairly detailed images and we should be able to differentiate between uh, fresh vegetation and vegetation that's been affected by the fire. These images were taken on August 5th. We're looking at the north flank of the fire. We can see Monty Lake at the top of the screen. Westwold is in the lighter shaded area to the right of the screen. We're moving down the fire perimeter from the northern flank to the eastern flank. There are digitally enhanced hot spots on the eastern perimeter of these burn areas. Uh, some are within. There's also a lot of green vegetation within the fire perimeter. This is the southeastern flank of the fire. It's made its way into a large forested block, uh, fairly hilly, two creeks, uh, one on the north, one on the southern side, and we can see Okanagan Lake in the lower right-hand portion of the screen. This is the southern flank of the fire, and a lot of these hot spots are on the northern perimeters of these fire pockets. By the smoke trail, the wind is traveling in a northeastern direction, so the southern flank could choke itself off from fuel. However, there are lots of green areas still within the fire perimeter. A direct link to access this screen on the EO browser will be in the description below. We're going to move eastwards to the Tremont Creek Fire. This is east of Ashcroft and east of Cache Creek. We can see the activity on the southeast flank and eastern flank on an approach towards Tunkwa Provincial Park. Here we're zooming in. Again, this is from August 5th. There appears to be a control perimeter on the lower left hand side of the screen, whereas on the upper right hand side of the screen there's a lot of smoke and haze. Very difficult to determine uh, both the fire behavior, though we can see a lot of enhanced hot spots indicated. We'll jump over to the southwest perimeter of the fire. We can see Barnes Lake in the upper left hand side. There is a few hot spots on uh, some of these fire pockets. Zooming out, looking above the fire zone, not a lot of smoke being detected in the northwestern flank of this fire that runs up next to the Thompson River and Highway 1. There does appear to be a horizontal line of haze that runs right through the center of the fire perimeter to the eastern flank where we see most of that fire activity. I'm switching back to the SWIR filter. We've moved slightly north. This is the Sparks Lake fire zone. And I wanted to zoom in and look at the area that's uh, kind of between Loon Lake and High Heum to to the east of both of those lakes. Uh, it has had a lot of activity in recent days. At the top left of the screen, just to the east of the Loon Lake Valley, we can see this lighter shade. That's the old Elephant Hill burn. The new fire line does appear to have fairly fresh vegetation in a forested block in a northwesterly direction. However, looking at the smoke and haze, it does appear to be moving in a northeasterly direction. And that helps to confirm that there were southwest breezes when this image was captured. We're now looking at Young Lake, and we can see that most of the intensity is coming from the eastern shore of a small lake east of Young Lake. Uh, we can see the burn area to the north and to the south, and that burn area to the north may provide some uh, defense uh, to any northward movement. Uh, there are forested blocks still to the east. Zooming out from the Sparks Lake fire zone, we can see that the image strip uh, only goes so far. I couldn't take a look at Flat Lake with this update, but let's uh, take a look 
further south, this is near the Nahat Latch, and uh, there's a fire that's been burning there to the west of Boston Bar, west of the Fraser River, and just zooming in, we see the burn area. There's intensity on both the western and the eastern flanks, and I suspect, I don't have the topography here, that the fire has been moving up a hill looking for fuel. The fire at Lytton is included in this scan for August 5th. I've looked at this prior in uh, a scan, I believe it was August 3rd, but this may offer a more current uh, reference if you'd like to go to the link in the description and zoom in and look at specific areas we can still see intensity on that southeastern flank and to the east of the Fraser on the northern flank as it moves its way up the Fraser Canyon. One more fire zone that we can access uh, Okanagan Falls uh, we can see Skaha Lake in the left-hand portion of the screen and this is the fire that moved to the east up to the Okanagan Plateau and at the far eastern perimeter of this fire we can still see a lot of activity there are hot spots and pockets of intensity moving just south we can see the burn area uh, that's moved east of Oliver and east of Osuius. Uh, we're zooming into the northern flank of this fire adjacent to Oliver. There are hot spots visible and in the northeastern flank there are still areas that are quite active. That smoke plume uh, top center of the screen tells me there are southwest winds uh, affecting the top of the Okanagan Plateau. We're zooming out. We can see the eastern flank of the fire. There are hot spots visible all along that eastern perimeter. It's quite hazy. The image is obscured and difficult to perceive. A look at the southern flank of the fire. It's difficult to distinguish where the burn areas are, but within these three gullies that we can see stretching across the center of the screen, uh, there is smoke plumes or smoke trails coming out of these gullies. Uh, there may be active fire. The terrain can be quite hazardous and there may be fuel pockets where fire can hunker down and uh, burn for a considerable amount of time. So I will include the link in the description below for this update, August 5th, of the Sentinel browser. It's uh, a fairly wide strip, uh, runs from Cache Creek all the way over to Osuius. Uh, there are several fire zones that you can investigate in that. We're looking at Windy now, and uh, this is the area around Chasm. It's showing me from the southwest two kilometers an hour. Chasm's an, in a bit of this calm pocket along with the flat lake fire zone. Whereas if we go a little bit to the southeast, there we see breezes coming from the southwest. This is over the White Rock Lake fire zone. 10 kilometers an hour from the southwest. And if we look at the forecast, winds in the West Wold area will come from the southwest with gusts in the afternoon until Sunday at approximately 8 a.m. Winds may start to shift Saturday evening and then into early Sunday morning coming from the west. There could also be precipitation rolling in and that's when winds will start coming more directly from the northwest. I hope this gave you some new tools and resources uh, to investigate your local area. Uh, please check in the links below the BC wildfire site. Uh, it get updates there for ground reports that are current. Infrared does have a delay and often we're looking at information that's after the fact. So please be safe if you have to move about among these fire zones. I'm going to check the NASA firm's update for the MODIS Terra. It usually comes out about 12.30 a.m. and see if there's any expansion on some of these fire lines. Thank you very much for your comments and reports. It helps to confirm that the data was accurate. Thank you for watching and keep your nose to the breeze.